This conference will now be recorded. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today uh, will be the second session uh, for uh, MRCG Part 2 revision for September 2020 exam. Um, the session today will depend mainly uh, on discussion the important uh, questions. Um, uh, I select the module uh, pregnancy of um, uh, early pregnancy module. Uh, we will include today ectopic pregnancy pregnancy of unknown location, and molar pregnancy. Uh, during the session, uh, members will uh, start to solve the questions. Um, and I will put the important also uh, information from the guideline. I advise also all of you after finish the session, just um, you can listen the record related topic in the records group. This is, will be also very important. Um, I think we will start. I think Dr. Adliya, Dr. Adliya, tell you can share the first one. You are here or no? Dr. Adila. Yeah. Sound clear, correct? Sound clear. Dr. Adila? Yes. Sir. Answers? Yes, thank you. Yes. Okay, so we'll start with the early pregnancy module. Yes. Um, yeah, I didn't revise very good, but I will try because I read it a long time ago. No problem. Yes. No problem. It's yes. just a question. You can face a question at any time, not only for the exam, just to refresh our knowledge. We yeah. start. Pregnancy. Skips. Okay, in the UK, the incidence of ectopic pregnancy is approximately uh, 11 in uh, 1,000. 11, so yeah, your answer A, okay. Yes. Uh, so the incidence approximately 11 per 1,000 yeah. pregnancy, and this is correct answer. Um, um, uh, ectopic pregnancy, this is implantation of the pregnancy outside the endometrial cavity. Uh, mostly it can occur in the Philippian tube, but can be also rarely occur in some sites like cervix, ovary, and abdominal cavity. Patient, she yes. can present with symptoms like abdominal pain, amenorrhea, vaginal bleeding, GIT, dizziness, shoulder pain, urinary symptoms, passage of tissue, and rectal pressure or pain. Common signs, pelvic tenderness, adenexial tenderness, and abdomen, abdominal tenderness. Okay, the most common finding in ectopic pregnancy, homogeneous or non-cystic adenexial mass, uh, or an empty extra uterine gestational sac, or extra uterine gestational sac containing a yolk sac. Uh, number A, um, homogeneous or non-cystic adenexial mass. This is the most common. Okay, so let's uh, check. Okay, so your answer correct. Um, mm -hmm. The common um, um, feature in the ultrasound for ectopic pregnancy, non-cystic adenexial mass or homogeneous. How much percentage? So it's 60. Mm -hmm. If there is sex, if you look, there is sac only, it will be 40%. If there is sac, and the sac include yolky sac or embryonic uh, pool, so this is, will be 20. So 60, make it like okay. this to remember well in the exam, it will be difficult. 50, 40, 20. So if there is only mass, mass, so it would be 60, and this is, would be the commonest feature. After this sac, without anything inside, it will be 40%. And if there is any yolk sac or a fetal bull inside, so it would be 20%. Okay. Um, a 32 years old brownie plus woman 
present to the emergency department with sudden onset of lower abdominal pain, mainly localized in the right iliac fossa. The pain is sharp in nature and is radiating to the right uh, flank. Last menstrual period was eight uh, weeks ago. A urine pregnancy test is positive. On transvaginal scan, the right at the next year was seen to contain an ectopic pregnancy measuring 22 uh, millimeters time 18 uh, millimeters time uh, 15 millimeters with cardiac activity and an absent hemobritonium. Vital sign are blood pressure 128 um, over 68, uh, pulse 72 uh, beat per minute temperature uh, 36.5, respiratory rate 16, HCG 5000. What is the treatment choice uh, for this woman? Uh, first, expectant management, B mesoprexate regimen, laparoscopic uh, right salpingectomy, D laparoscopic right salpingectomy, E laparotomy, and right salpingectomy. Uh, my answer will be. C, ma'am. What? C, C ma'am. Uh, laparoscopic salpingectomy, right. What you answer, Dr. Adila? I can't hear your C. answer. C. Lab laparoscopic. C, ma'am. C, C. C. Okay. Okay, give her a chance, Dr. Adila, and after this next one, he can uh, also chair so that we can hear uh, the voice clearly. So your answer C. Okay, yes. so the patient here, laparoscopic, right yes. salpingectomy. So the standard, yes. this is the um, treatment for ectopic pregnancy. It will be laparoscopy, and we will talk about the benefit of the laparoscopy. Uh, laparoscopy will be better than laparotomy because this is, will be a shorter operation time less intraoperative blood loss, shorter hospital stay, lower cost, lower analgesia requirement, and less uh, adhesion formation. Um, uh, there is two types of the operation, either salpingectomy, and there is risk of persistent uh, trophoblastic after uh, the operation about 11%. And this patient, she will follow up uh, HCG seven days. You be careful. Serum, serum, serum HCG seven days after the surgery, then weekly until negative. Be careful in the exam, you will be confused. You will be confused, you are not concentrated. He will give you serum and during seven days, two weeks, and then weekly until how much you, you don't know. So in the, in the exam, it will be copy based from the guideline. So serum, serum, HCG, taken seven days after after the surgery, then weekly until negative, negative result obtained. Mm -hmm. um, um, patient uh, laparoscopy, if the patient condition is stable, but if the patient shocked, so uh, you need to be uh, faster, so it will be laparotomy. Um, the other operation, it will be salpingectomy, as removing of the tube, and usually they will remove the tube if the other tube healthy. But if the other tube, anything uh, could reduce the fertility, like the, there is history of the previous ectopic pregnancy in this tube, the tube, the other tube, or there is uh, damage for any reason, a previous abdominal surgery, previous pelvic uh, inflammatory disease. So if you find in the question, any reason could affect the fertility, and usually they will put the patient with previous abdominal surgery. Uh, so you will not uh, be concentrate. So this patient, it's better for her, salpingotomy, uh, to preserve the two uh, tubes. If he didn't give in the question anything, so he means that the other tube healthy, so you are going to remove the tube. When you are removing the tube, also there is follow-up. Some they are thinking if we are removing the tube, there is no follow-up, no. According to the NICE guidelines, there is, will be follow-up for uh, urine, urine, be careful, the previous one was serum. Now we are removing the tube. It will be urine pregnancy test after three weeks. And if it is a positive, patient should return back again for further assessment. Um, expectant management, when I will choose? In the exam, you will be confused. And even in part three, 
when you are um, discussing is a, uh, as a task, you are confused. This patient will I can use expectant management or not? So expectant management, if there is no any abdominal pain, no evidence of hemoprotonium um, on the ultrasound, the ectopic less than three centimeter. Be careful, three centimeter, three less than three. Um, no evidence of um, fetal heart and HCG less than 1,500. So in this scenario, you can use expectant management. How will be the follow-up? The follow-up for the uh, serum HCG will be repeated between uh, two and seven days. This is individual assessment according to the patient in front of you. So I can give her two days, three days, until seven days. So the, it will be from two to seven days. And I will follow up the patient until the HCG if dropping, if dropping. So I should follow up the patient until the level of the serum HCG less than 20. You remember salbingotomy? Salbingotomy until negative. Here in the expectant management until less than 20 international uh, unit per liter. In the exam, you will be confused. You don't know the number. You will be confused 15 or 20. When you are using the drug like mesotrexate, the number will be less, so 15, until 15 international units per liter. In the expectant, you are not using any treatment, so until only 20 international units uh, per liter. When I should stop the expectant, I should use another treatment for ectopic pregnancy. If the HCG become greater than 2,000, so here I need to stop, I need to shift to the other treatment for ectopic pregnancy. Be careful. When I should use expectant management for ectopic pregnancy, how much is the level of HCG? I will follow up the patient how every how many days, between two and seven days individual assessment until the HCG will be less than 20 international units per liter. When I will discontinue, if the patient started to have significant pain or the HCG become greater than 2,000 international units during the follow-up. Next, Dr. Adila. Okay. A 34 years old woman who is a gravity 2 baroban present with mild vaginal spotting at six weeks of gestation. A transvaginal scan revealed no intrauterine sac, but a 2 times 3 centimeter mass was seen in the left atomyxia with no free fluid. She opted to have medical management after uh, detailed counseling. This was undertaken the same day the woman was asymptomatic. The following are her serum HCG results. At present uh, presentation, 1,450 uh, international unit. 48 hours uh, post presentation, 1,650 international unit. Day four, post medical treatment, 1,700. Uh, day seven, post uh, medical treatment, uh, 1,200 international units. What the most appropriate management option? A, advise the woman to do pregnancy tests in two weeks as HCG is decreasing. Counsel and administer second dose uh, mesotrexate. Continue weekly HCG until less than uh, 15 if woman remaining asymptomatic. HCG. Uh, every 48 hours uh, till it is undetectable, perform laparoscopy and salvingectomy. Uh, my answer will be C, continue weekly HCG until less than 15 if women remain asymptomatic. Uh, why? Because it's here increasing at 48 hours. So why you choose this answer? Because it is uh, decreasing at uh, day seven. It should decrease. Yes, it should not be done at uh, at 48 hours because in the when you are giving gemisotrexate, yes. we are doing uh, on day four and on day seven. Why they are not you uh, do early because it can increase and this is the point in the question. Here the in the start it was one one thousand four hundred fifty and increased to hundred. 
and this is should not be done because um, it's advisable not be done because this is, will be increased the HCG after mesotrexy. But we are looking at day four and day seven. How much should be the drop? Uh, fifteen percent. More than fifteen percent. So More it's about five hundred. 500, I, am, I can't calculate how 15, but it looks more than 15. 500 drops, so it's, it's working the mesotrexate. So in the mesotrexate, if it is dropped between day four and day seven, yeah. more than 15%, so this patient, she will need to continue HCG weekly until the HCG less than 15. You remember the expectant was 20. Yes. Now we are giving mesotrexate, so we are dropping uh, to 15 international unit if the woman re remain asymptomatic. So this is your answer also correct, Dr. Adila. This is uh, point mesotrexate. Mesotrexate treatment, um, we are giving uh, the injection IM, the dose 50 milligram meters per meter square. We are checking the level on day four and on day seven not early because the level of the HCG will increasing. If the level drop uh, between day four and day seven, more than 15, so this we no, no need for any other uh, injection from mesotrexate. Um, uh, if, if no need for a repeat mesotrexate, right? No need, we are looking to day four and day seven. Usually in the exams, you will put something to confuse you. Increasing the level after 48 hours, this is normal. This is, can happen. Your main uh, concern on day four and day seven. If between uh, day four and day seven, the HCG drop more than 15%, so this is mesotrexate working now, probably. Plus, you need to follow up this patient. Um, um, uh, you will do HCG for her weekly until the HCG become less than 15 international unit uh, per liter. In the exam, what will happen? He will put you 15, uh, 15. another question 20, uh, another question you are confused, is this a serum or urine? So we are doing here serum. If the level not decrease by 15%, so here uh, between day four and day seven, only between day four and day seven. If the drop not more than 15%, this patient, we need again to assess this patient. First point, we will do ultrasound scan. Why ultrasound scan? Because if there is fetal viability, you can't continue, uh, continue the treatment um, uh, with mesotrexate. You need to uh, um, do surgery for this patient. But if there is no any fetal heart, you can give a second dose uh, mesotrexate. As this is rules, and in the exam, if you don't uh, put rules, you can't answer the question in the exam. Success rate, um, if you are giving the mesotrexate for any patient, success rate, if the patient level less than 1,000, it's it reached to uh, 98%. But if it is greater than uh, 5,000, the success only will be 38. So they are not giving the mesotrexate for the patient more than 5,000, when I should give the mesotrexate. So in the exam, I will look again. I will put rules, like we are putting rules for the expectant. Now we are putting rules also for mesotrexate. So patient hemodynamically stable, biologic. If the patient unstable, so this patient for surgery. HCG less than 1,500, this is ideal. But until how much I can give in the exam the mesotrexate? Until 5,000. So until 5,000, I can use mesotrexate. If more, I can't use. So just put rules for yourself, because in the exam, you don't know here I can use mesotrexate or no. No fetal heart activity. If there is fetal heart activity, uh, the patient, uh, you can't give her also mesotrexate. No intrauterine pregnancy, because sometimes the case will be a hetero pregnancy. So there is intrauterine pregnancy, so you can't also uh, yeah, give the patient mesotrexate because you will harm the baby uh, inside the patient uterus. So you, you will want to treat only ectopic. So one of the contraindications, you can't give mesotrexate uh, if there is intrauterine pregnancy. Patient willing for follow-up. Uh, patient, you, you just know in the previous slide, we tell this patient will come again on day four, 
in day seven, she will come weekly until the uh, HCG become less than 15%, um, percent, 15 international unit. So if the patient tell you, doctor, I can't come for follow up, also this is, will be not suitable for her to give her bisotrexate. So the patient willing for follow up is important, so careful in the question if this patient can follow up or not. Um, no any allergy, uh, no any allergy for the mesotrexate also one uh, important. So you will look in the exam, you will do circle, circle, circle. This patient I can use. In the exam, you will be confused in what? You will confuse in the HCG level. So be careful. HCG until 5,000, I can use mesotrexate. Patient stable, no cardiac activity. Patient willing for follow-up, no intrauterine pregnancy. How much is this, the mass size? It should be less than. A 35, so 3.5. So in expectant, you remember less than three. Here, less than 3.5. Uh, do comparison, so it will be easy for you to remember because also in the exam, I don't remember how much should be the mass. So less than 35 in the uh, ectopic, you can use um, uh, chemotherapy, mesotrexate. And if there is less than three, you can use three centimeter, you can use expectant to match. Um, there is no any effect on the ovarian reserve when you are giving the patient mesotrexate. Dr. Adila? Uh, the most common adverse effect of mesotrexate is excessive fruitness, marrow suppression, pulmonary fibrosis, non-specific pneumonitis, uh, gastric ulceration. I will go for B, marrow suppression. Uh, my answer B, B. This is also from green to, uh, top guideline. Mm. There is, will be adverse effect, which will, in, will, will include uh, bone marrow suppression, pulmonary fibrosis, non-specific uh, pulmonitis, liver cirrhosis, renal failure. The most common adverse mm. effect would be excessive flutterance. Okay, so you, the answer will be A. This is A. also from the pregnancy green top guideline. Mm. Okay, it is recommended that a woman treated with mesotroxate wait before trying to conceive again at least three months, one year, six months. No need contraception. Uh, my answer is three months. She needs to wait three months before get pregnant. Three Conceive. months. Three months. Yeah. How yes. much if the patient received chemotherapy for molar pregnancy? How much time uh, she should use contraception? Uh, uh, she should uh, conceive after one year. Uh, one year if she, after from completion. One year from oh, completion of her treatment. Okay, so be careful. In ectopic pregnancy, contraception is three months. After molar pregnancy, the chemotherapy, after complete the treatment, it will be at least one year. So be careful. Do comparison between the information so it will be easy for you. So here in ectopic pregnancy, if the patient she treated with mesotrexate, you need this patient, she need to use contraception at least for uh, three months. But uh, Dr. Rada? Uh, mesotrexate, yes. I think, in all three months, if she use it on uh, molar or uh, ectopic. But if she um, use a chemotherapy, she needs to wait one year after complete uh, the treatment. Uh, for molar pregnancy, one year, just to be easy. In molar pregnancy, at least one year. In, in mesotrexate, because in molar pregnancy, she can receive frequent dose of chemotherapy. So we don't know when this patient she will finish her treatment, follow up. So just after the last dose for the chemotherapy, she needs to wait one year. But in the, chemo, the ectopic pregnancy, usually she will take one dose, usually. So it's only yeah. three months. Okay. Uh, just to again, revision again, mesotrexate follow up, expectant management follow up, after salpingectomy, after salpingectomy. Mesotrexate, again, on day four and day seven. The level should, if decrease more than 15% between day four and day seven, this patient, she will need follow up HCG weekly until the HCG less than 15 international units per liter. 
expectant. Again, this is, will be individual assessment. Repeat, uh, serum HCG between day two and day seven, this is, will be individual assessment. And all the women, if it is dropped, the woman will um, follow up the HCG after this until the HCG become less than 20 international units uh, per liter. After salbingotomy, seven days serum, and after this weekly until negative result obtained. After salbingectomy, we tell urine pregnancy test is three weeks, and the patient should return back if uh, the pregnancy test positive. Dr. Adila? 29 years old patient has right ectopic pregnancy, no fetal heartbeat, beta HCG 2000, stable vitals. Uh, A, ovarian cystectomy, B, systematic uh, mesotrexate, C, salbingectomy, D, mesotrexate in sac, E, salbingectomy. Uh, B, systematic mesotrexate. Okay. Yes, because here um, patient, patient no, stable. no fetal yes, patient is stable, no fetal heart, HCG two thousand until five thousand. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, we can give the patient systemic mesotrexate. The success mm -hmm. rate if the patient take only one dose of mesotrexate, it reach mm -hmm. to ninety five percent, and if she requires second dose, the success rate only will be twenty seven percent. So 95, if, you, if the patient use um, one dose, second dose, if she require again second dose, the success rate will be only 27. years old, ectopic pregnancy with some time, fetal heartbeat scene with HCG 2,900. Three centimeter wide at the next cell mass, my stomach pain. Uh, can you mute yourself? Uh, please be warm to the uh, sound will be clear. So, Dr. Maha Hamidu, please mute yourself. Dr. Maha. Okay. Okay, the option is A, ovarian system. Estimated mesotroxate. Salvingectomy, salvingectomy, mesotroxate in sac. It will be salvingectomy. Salvingectomy, why? Why? Because um, there is a fetal heart beating, so it is contraindicated uh, for mesotroxate use, and there is no other. Yes, correct. Yeah. So, so if I give you this patient, she has previous history of. Um, of abdominal surgery. What will be the, the, the answer? Abdominal surgery? Yes. Uh, it will be laparoscopic salving. Uh, she has previous uh, abdominal surgeries. Uh, it will be salvingectomy. Salvingectomy. So be careful yeah. before you are using the salvingectomy and salvingectomy. This patient will be laparoscopy, uh, so I will I will do salpingotomy or salpingectomy. So if there is anything reducing the fertility, I will use salpingotomy. If no, so salpingectomy. So your answer correct? This patient for salpingectomy. Okay. Hello, Doctor Hala. Yes, Doctor. Hello. Yes, Doctor. Yes, Doctor. Yeah. Can I ask one question or at the end of the class? Uh, it's better in the end to not decrease the concentration. Just write, uh, just write in the paper, it will be better. And in the end, we can collect. So the session will be uh, be faster and do not decrease the concentration for us. But just write in the paper and we can open the discussion in the end. Okay. Uh, Dr. Uh, um, the commonest side of ectopic pregnancy the fibrial end, ambiola, and isthmus. Uh, I think it will be the isthmus. I'm not, I'm not sure. Dr. Maha, please can't mute all here because I will mute also for Dr. Adila. Dr. Maha, if possible, please mute yourself. 
I cannot hear you well. Uh, Dr. Maha, please, can you mute yourself, please, because there is a much noise from your site. If possible, please mute yourself. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, okay Dr. Adila. Yes. Uh, I forget this question. I think it will be uh, C, Ismas. Last answer for you? Uh, or B, the ambula? Ambula. Okay, yeah. so the mm. comments is from uh, TOG article. I think yeah. this is a question from TOG article. So the commonest it will be Ambola, you see, to 80%, Fembria yes. 5%, uh, Esmos um, 12%. So in the Ambola, it's reached to 80%. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, patient complain lower abdominal pain and pre-vaginal examination spotting of vaginal bleeding, pregnancy test positive. A high probability of a tubal ectopic pregnancy uh, HCCG not done. Um, a, uh, the next mass moving separate to the ovary, compressing a gestational sac containing a yolk sac. I mean the ultrasound mm -hmm. feature. Ultrasound this feature will show the high probability of tubal ectopic pregnancy. Okay, so this is the ultrasound feature of a uh, tubal uh, yes. ectopic pregnancy, yeah? Yes. Okay, the next cell mass moving separate to the ovary, compressing gestation sac containing a yolk sac, or an adenexial mass moving separately to the ovary, compressing gestation sac and fetal pool with or without fetal heartbeat, a complex in homogeneous adenexial mass moving separately to the ovary. Uh, B. B. B, a denixial net moving um, separated from the ovary, compressing the stitchinal fat and the fetal bone. So this is, will be wrong answer. It should be C. How I will know this answer? It, we, now he wants a high probability. High probability means still mm. you are not confirming, but there is high probability. Uh, how will answer the question? Answer this one, then we will tell how to uh, not be confused in the exam here. Answer this one first. Uh, this is the same question. You read, you check if this is a same question or different question. Okay. Patient complain lower abdominal pain and vaginal examination spotting of vaginal bleeding. Pregnancy test positive, indicating there is a tubal ectopic pregnancy. HCG not done. Okay. A, adenexial mass moving separately to the ovary and compressing gestation sac containing a yolk sac. And adenexial mass moving separately to the ovary with an empty gestation sac, sometimes described as tubal ring or vagal sign. C, a complex inhomogeneous adenexial mass moving separate to the ovary. So this is different from the last question. Uh, my answer would be B. Because there is a tubal ring, the vagal sign. Indicate ovary compressing the fictional sac containing a um, yolk sac, a denexial mass, empty gestational sac. Okay, let's lock the answer. So it will be A. Um, sac containing yolk sac. So how we will um, confirm? This patient, she is a case of tubal pregnancy or this patient high probability? If mm -hmm. you look here, you look here. In the tubal pregnancy, no. if you wanted to tell this patient a case of tubal, either there will be a gestational sac with yolk sac or fetal bone. So if you see in the question yolk sac or fetal bone, you will use this a case of signs of ectopic pregnancy. High probability high probability so this is will be in the, including mass can be there is also gestational sac or tuber ring okay or there is will be homogeneous adenexial mass moving from the ovary so in total how will i will differentiate both if in the question yolk sac in the in the in the in the, in the gestational sac or fetal bone so this patient if not mm. there the yolk sac and the fetal bone 
any other thing, he give you adnexial mass moving from the ovary. He give you empty uh, gestational sac, a tuber ring, all in homogeneous adnexial mass separated from the ovary. So you didn't here see any uh, fetal pool or yolk sac. So here there will be high probability of it to be pregnant. This is nice guideline. Uh, 2009. Easy or no? Easy? High probability. High yeah. probability. Well, I didn't. Conf I can't tell hundred percent. I can't tell hundred percent that this is ectopic pregnancy. But there is highly suspect suspicious that this is case of ectopic pregnancy. But I confirm this is patient ectopic. If I see a denexial mass and there is sac and there is yolk sac uh, inside or there is fetal bone. So high probability and tubal pregnancy. So I confirm or still not confirm. Uh, I, I don't want from you to be confused, just as this is rules. I will, uh, how I will, I will choose this, this is case high probability. High probability, so still there is no any sex, uh, no yolk sex scene or fetal bone. If I see one of these in the question, so this is a case of tubal ectopic pregnancy. This is ectopic and uh, miscarriage diagnosed. This is nice guideline, which mm. uh, published in April. 2019. Okay. Uh, we can give a chance for anyone others. Yes. If you, anyone others can share. Anyone like to share or Dr. Adila will continue. Others. Others. Can I share, Dr. Gada? Uh, who is taking Dr. Um, Dr. Salma? Dr. Salma. Okay, Dr. Salma. Okay, thank you. Uh, previous cesarean section for <laughs> breathing and breath <laughs> delivery. Okay. Previous cesarean section for breathing and breath delivery. Now six week pregnancy test uh, pregnancy test positive and mild bleeding, vaginal examination, cervical canal and upper segment empty. Gestation is sac near lower uterine segment and negative sliding test. Diagnosis. Uh, CS scar ectopic, cervical ectopic, retained product of conception, inevitable miscarriage. This one, uh, CS scar ectopic, A. Caesarean section um, scar ectopic. So, how ectopic. we will think in the exam? We will put circle. Circle. This patient, she has previous caesarean section. She is pregnant now. There is a spotting of bleeding. Mm. Cervix empty. Our uterine mm. segment empty. So he giving you a key that this is case negative sliding uh, test. This is will be negative in cesarean scar, um, ectopic pregnancy, and also in cervical ectopic. So in negative, it will be in both. But here he tell you the cervix um, and canal already empty. So you you can't use a cervical ectopic. So this is will be answer cesarean um, scar ectopic. Mm. Just a minute. This is a cesarean scar. This is um. Uterus empty, and this is a scar, and this is a sac will be inside. Mm -hmm. um, uh, okay, let's uh, answer this one first. Okay. Uh, the most common cause for a cesarean uh, section ectopic pregnancy in patient with the history of previous one due to triplet, previous one due to twins, previous one cesarean section due to failed instrumental delivery, Briefest one cesarean section due to breach. Briefest one cesarean section due to fetal distress. Okay. Actually, I don't then, know the answer. Uh, okay, it, 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 it's due to breach. <laughs> due to breach. It's, yes, it's due to breach. Yes, because when you are uh, check how much the rate uh, of cesarean scar pregnancy, they find that most of probably the briefest um, indication was case of cesarean, um, previous cesarean section due to breach. And they tell mm -hmm. most probably because of poorly formed lower segment. No, poorly formed. So if he give you what is the commonest, so it will be cesarean section, previous cesarean section due to breach presentation. This is the most common frequent risk for future cesarean section ectopic pregnancy. This is also from TOG articles. I think published in January 2017. Also, there is important discussion in the group. I think I did this one with Sally. It's also important to listen to this record. And all the record is also short. Don't worry. Maybe the record is 15 minutes, so it will not take time from you. Next. 
اوكي the main diagnostic tool for cesarean scar ectopic is MRI color doppler ultrasound it is color doppler color doppler the main diagnostic tool the main diagnostic tool so main diagnostic tool this will be ultrasound yeah the first point you will do ultrasound you can do transvaginal ultrasound sometimes you can do also abdominal ultrasound if the pregnancy is also bigger this is will allow a panoramic view of the uterus as a relation you can use later if needed other uh, imaging but the first one the main diagnostic it will be ultrasound uh, cesarean section scar pregnancy uh, the incidence about one every uh, 1800 to 2200 um, i can't remember the number so it's one every 2000 to be easy uh, there is will be 19 percent of the women you will have defect in the anterior myometrium at the level of the previous cesarean section uh, scar the biggest problem of this pregnancy in the scar, the patient she can have um, uh, rupture, ectopic, rupture uh, uterus and hemorrhage and even hysterectomy. Uh, there is two types, type one and type two. Type one endogenous. If the sac will grow toward the uterus, the trion cavity or cervicoesmic um, junction. So if the sac grow to inside, this is, will be type one endogenous type. Type 2, exogenous, if the sac grow towards the bladder. So this is, will be type 2, exogenous type. Uh, in two-thirds of the case, they find that about the, the scar, um, the scar uh, thickness was about less than uh, 5 millimeter in the cases of cesarean, uh, cesarean section ectopic pregnancy. Ultrasound features, as uh, the previous, uh, the other questions we answered before, the uterus will be empty, the cervix will be empty, the gestational sac will fill the niche of the, the scar, there is, will be negative sliding um, uh, organ sign. Uh, when it will be positive, the sliding uh, sign, it will be positive only in, in miscarriage. In miscarriage, the sac will leave the uterus and will move to the, um, uh, the cervix. So it's freely movable. If just by the probe you pressure in the cervix, it can be moved the, the sac because it's already moved from the uterus down. But if it is implanted in the cervix or in the uterus, the negative, the, the sliding sign, it will be negative because it is already implanted in the uterus or the cesarean section. So it will be positive only in the miscarriage, if one patient miscarriage. But if in the patient with cervical pregnancy, or cesarean uh, section, uh, ectopic pregnancy, it will be negative. So if negative, sink in two, either cervical or cesarean uh, section, uh, ectopic pregnancy, and we are giving the key of the cesarean section, how you are going to the uterus or the cervix also will be here empty. So you are going to use cesarean section, cesarean scar pregnancy. Um, the, there is several type of treatment for cesarean scar pregnancy. Expectant management, this is rare, rarely used in selected cases. Medical treatment uh, using uh, mesotrexate. Sometimes you are given the local injection in the mesotrexate in the sac. Um, sometimes you are using also uterine artery embolization. Surgery, it can be uh, frequent types of the surgery. It can be dilatation and uh, surgical evacuation, and we will discuss in the next um, slide how it will be done. Can be hysteroscopic resection, vaginal resection, uh, excision. Can be laparoscopy. You 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 remember type two? Type two can be um, uh, will grow towards the bladder, so it can be needed to be excision by laparoscopy. Open excision like laparotomy can be also combined laparoscopy and hysteroscopy. And even can be a uh, hysterectomy. Uh, there is other treatment modality. You can use the trine artery embolization. After 48 hours, you can uh, follow it by evacuation and uh, uh, evacuation and uh, the resection of the uh, pregnancy. After this, can be followed uh, uh, by mesotrexate. Uh, in the surgery. Uh, remember that this, this patient will be high risk to bleeding. So how, they think how to decrease the risk of bleeding. They tell before uh, we are doing evacuation for this pregnancy, they will apply Schrodinger suture, like in the picture, this is Schrodinger, but I will not tie. I will not tie. Then I will start to evacuate this pregnancy. 
So then the patient will bleed. Just I confirm no any more remnant, then they will tie. So they, this is will decrease the risk of the bleeding. The problem in the hemostasis. So they are thinking how we will do evacuation for this patient, suction evacuation with decrease the risk of bleeding. So they apply this suture, short cut suture, as you are doing circulation for the patient. And they started to do evacuation. Once evacuation done, the patient will start to bleed, then they tie. And this is will do proper hemostasis and will decrease the risk of bleeding of the patient. And after this, you can remove it later. Cervical ectopic, this is less than 1% of all the ectopic pregnancy. Here, how I will diagnose in the exam. The uterus will be empty. He will give you the cervix uh, barrel shape. Sometimes they are putting a balloon. Sometimes they are using the word balloon. So the uterus empty, cervix barrel shape, balloon the cervix. The gestational sac will be below the internal uh, cervical os. Absence, you remember, just we tell now, sliding sign will be absent in two in cervical ectopic pregnancy and the cesarean section uh, pregnancy. Um, there is, will be also blood flow around the sac because already the patient is um, uh, already the, the, the sac implanted in the cervix. So it's, 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 it's it, um, just to be. What rules? How I will diagnose again? If the uterus empty, uh, it will be implanted in the cervix. The sliding also sign will be negative. Uh, the treatment will be mainly medical treatment. The surgery is better for only the patient who is suffering with life-threatening condition. Because if it is misdiagnosed and you are doing evacuation for one patient, uh, a cervical ectopic, cervical ectopic, and you are thinking that this is case of missed, misca missed um, miscarriage, so it will be the patient she can have severe bleeding and even uh, can lead to hysterectomy. Uh, Dr. Salma. Yeah, estimate. Estimated uh, the efficacy of systemic misdirected administration in the treatment of cervical ectopic pregnancy to be approximately um, 91 percent. 91 percent. 91 percent. Yes, correct answer. Okay, systemic. So that it will be effective up to 91 percent. Okay. The following factors were shown to be associated with the higher risk of primary failure of the treatment of cervical ectopic pregnancy with systemic misdirected, except high risk of primary failure, except uh, gestational age 10 weeks, uh, BTCG level less than 10,000, crown ramp length greater than 10 millimeter. Fetal cardiac activity. Crown rumblings greater no no. BTC less than ten thousand. Okay, uh, be careful. We are using here except. So we except. are using the except. In the exam, you will be confused. Just you see one answer correct, you will use, but the answer up, he won't mm -hmm. accept. Mm -hmm. Be careful. Be careful in the exam. So your answer is correct. HCG mm -hmm. less than 10,000. So how, how will be the failure? What is the reason for failure? If gestational sac more than nine weeks. So um, how I will remember? I, my memory not working. So I will make it 10 weeks. Level 10, more than 10,000. Crown rumbling lens, more than 10. So I will make it 10, 10, 10. Uh, but I will remember that gestational sac, even 9 point plus 1 day, it will be failed. You, easy for you or no? Yes. Just to remember, uh, when it will be failed, the mesotrexate in the cervical pregnancy, if the gestational sac 10, it should be more than 9. More than 10,000 international units, Crown rumbling glands should be uh, more than 10, also it will be um, failed. And if there is fetal cardiac activity, we tell fetal cardiac activity, this is will make also a failure of the mesotrexate. So your answer was also correct. This is the failure. 
with the systemic mesotrexy. Be careful when you answer. You answer, you are choosing which one correct answer well, or he wants the wrong answer. Okay. okay. Next. Pregnant, pregnant at 12 weeks had vaginal bleeding and evacuation of product retained uh, product of conception after four days, discover her blood group RH negative. Uh, till how many days NTD can be given? Hmm. Actually, NTD should be given less than seven, within 72 hours, but it can be given up to 10 days. Correct. So NTD can be given until 10 days. Correct. Uh, we are giving the 250 international units should be given for all the women non-sensitized. According to Green Top Guideline, we are giving all the patients with ectopic pregnancy uh, managed surgically. And if the patient uh, managed either expectant management or medical, so um, if the patient she has frequent bleeding or abdominal pain also, they are giving also NTD. Patient after IVF cycle, five weeks after multiple after multiple embryo transfer, come with spotting of bleeding plus abdominal pain. Uh, what is the question here? Miscarriage, ectopic, biochemical pregnancy, hetero pregnancy. This one, um, biochemical pregnancy. And yeah, the point of this question, just, um, just there is sometimes in the exam could appear some questions uh, with key, just a key. If you see one patient with IVF pregnancy and the multiple embryo, multiple embryo transfer, and he giving this patient could be ectopic pregnancy, like she has spotting of bleeding and abdominal pain, so this patient could be ectopic. So if there is multiple embryo transfer, think about hetero pregnancy. Hetero pregnancy, because why he will give multiple embryo transfer? In the real exam, he should give you a key to choose most probable. What will be the most probable diagnosis? So if he give you multiple embryo and they give you symptoms or signs, this patient could have ectopic pregnancy. So if he give you multiple embryo, think about hetero pregnancy. So this means that there is one uh, one embryo implanted in the uh, tube and others uh, in trite. So the key here, I want to give you a key. If in the exam, give you a patient with IVF with multiple embryo transfer, think more about uh, hetero pregnancy. Hetero pregnancy, there is, will be intrauterine pregnancy and ectopic pregnancy in the same time. This is reach the incidence um, about one every 8,000 to one every 30,000. Um, uh, more common, after multiple embryo transfer, there is different scenario. He can give you, there is already uh, sac intrauterine, and he will give you also key that there is also sac in the, uh, the tube, like adnexial mass with also uh, homogeneous mass. So he wanted to give you also another, that this is a case of hetero pregnancy, but you will highly suspect it after multiple embryo transfer. The treatment, um, uh, intrauterine pregnancy must be put in consideration because you are uh, treating not only the ectopic because this patient she has intrauterine. So the mesotrexate here, you can't give mesotrexate except if this patient intrauterine pregnancy is unviable. So you can use the mesotrexate. Um, but otherwise, you can't use mesotrexate. The treatment will be local injection of uh, uh, potassium chloride or hyperosmolar uh, glucose and aspirate the sex. This is one of the treatments. The, uh, this is, will be used in the stable patient. If patient either stable or unstable, you can use the surgical treatment. Uh, you can uh, just do laparoscopy and removing the ectopy. So if the patient stable, I can use local injection. But if the patient, uh, local injection, not for me, uh, we're using here potassium chloride or hyperosmolar glucose. Because if I'm using something also like mesotrexate, this is can harm the baby intrauterine. So be careful what you are injecting. Because also in the exam, you are confused. You are thinking uh, it will be mesotrexate, but you will harm the baby intrauterine. Surgical can be used for stable or unstable woman. This is laparoscopy and removing the tubes. Expectant, expectant management if the baby inside the uterus viable and the hetero pregnancy non viable. So you, you can follow up the patient if this one will be uh, resolved without any intervention. 
a source of the information um, from diagnosis and the management of ectopic pregnancies is from Green Top Guideline strategy also and cesarean section uh, uh, scar ectopic pregnancies. This is uh, TOG Article 2017. This is also from my red line. During performance scan, do you perform an early ultrasound scan to determine the viability of an intrauterine pregnancy? There is no visible heartbeat, but uh, there is visible fetal pool to measure. Gestational age, you should measure uh, the crown rumblings, the mean gestational sac diameter, the last menstrual period alone. There is fetal pool, so we should measure uh, crown rumblings. Correct. So if I see fetal pool, I will measure crown rumblings. If I can't see, so I will measure the gestational sac. It's easy. So there is first point I will look what in the ultrasound viability, no viability. Next, next I will check the crown rumblings. If there is no fetal pool, so I will measure the gestational sac. It's easy. Just put rules. So you can answer in the exam easily. This is EMQ. Uh, 29 years um, old, gravid three for two women attend for ultrasound scan at 11 weeks gestation. By transvagin ultrasound, she is found to have gestational sac more than 25 millimeter with the old sac, with the old sac. No fetal bull is seen. So we'll... Uh, uh, repeat ultrasound scan in seven days. So G. G okay. G, yes. Mm. Okay. Uh, 22, 21. Mm. Prime gravid woman attend uh, for ultrasound scan at nine weeks gestation by transvagin ultrasound. She is found to have gestational sac more than 25 millimeter with IOL sac, no fetal bull is seen. Ultrasound repeated after one week, no fetal bull. Uh, so this one, uh, like this missed abortion, conservative management, conservative assurance, and discharge, repeat the sound for rubroscopy, repeat all the sound, medical management with uh, MIFI, MIFI Bristol, elective evacuation of the temporal of conception. Uh, nine weeks, from twenty-five. Conservative management. So you choose, um, choose, you choose C. Okay. <laughs> Next. 22, give two bar one plus zero, 10 weeks ultrasound done, trans abdominal, the crown rumbling, seven millimeter, no fetal pulsation. Seven millimeter. Again, ultrasound after seven days. G. Ah, oh, 10 mm. weeks, okay. What? Which I'll one? Two weeks. Which one? No, no, don't, don't all be here. No help in the exam. No friend. You can't request a friend to answer, okay? <laughs> okay I wish. <laughs> I wish I, I can call a friend. <laughs> but not an option in the exam. Okay. Mm. So what is the answer? Actually, I, I choose uh, seven days repeat ultrasound, but it is already ten weeks now pregnant. I don't okay. Know. So, so in the exam, you should answer. Yeah. Yes. You are awake or sleeping, others. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes I'm sleeping in the online courses. Sometimes they are awake. The course is finished. <laughs> no, <I'm not> <laughs> uh, I wish you are awake. I don't like if you are sleeping. Okay. Repeat ultrasound after seven days. Seven days. Who are you choosing? It's D. okay, but 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 usually in the exam they will give uh, a different option, but no problem. Okay. But Usually, in the exam, you will give different answer. It, it can't be the same answer. Rarely. I think it would be rarely that the examiner would give the same answer for the two questions. But, okay. You answer already. Next. 
29 years old woman present with history of bleeding at 9 weeks gestation. Ultrasound show viable intrauterine pregnancy of 8 weeks gestation. There is a uh, 17 to 21 millimeter subchorionic hematoma. On examination, okay. there is uh, there is no active bleeding. Okay. <laughs> this one uh, is the one conservative management. Conservative, so it's um, conservative. I make so double. It's so it's C. You choose two for so you choose two for two two. Okay, GG CC. Okay, let's see your answer. I think you do. Okay, so the first one was correct because already uh, don't look to the last menstrual period. Just look to the um, uh, the is how much is the ultrasound because maybe the patient to give wrong a uh, last menstrual period. So just we will see the ultrasound scan. So need here to repeat correct in seven days because the ultrasound done transvaginal. The other one already, already the woman um, already confirmed. So it should be um, giving a, a treatment. So conservative management, it can be an option. It can be option. But here already you confirm. So this patient need treatment. So the treatment will be evacuation of routine. So you confirm. Confirm, but if the patient she refuse and she tell I don't want, I don't want, I want to wait. So this is, will be another option for the. But the first treatment, this patient already confirmed it, so I can uh, do evacuation for the product of. I confirm, I confirm. But conservative can be an option if the patient refuse uh, for uh, the, for evacuation. Next one already the ultrasound done trans abdominal. Trans abdominal you can't use for ten, uh, seven days. Here you should wait for uh, fourteen days. So be careful. If the ultrasound for rhinal, it will be seven days. If the ultrasound uh, trans abdominal, so it will be fourteen days. The last one will be conservative patient stable fetal heart positive hematoma, but patient no active breathing, so it will be conservative mode. So be careful regarding the ultrasound done trans abdominal or trans hmm. yes. In the last they are both in, they can't depend on one ultrasound to confirm the viability in the end. If you can't see the viability, you can't depend on ultras in one ultrasound. If less than seven millimeters of crown rumbling a lens, you need to repeat the ultrasound in seven days minimum if you can't see the fetal heart. If seven or more and you can't see, you can't see again you need second opinion or repeat again uh, the ultrasound in seven days so they wanted to tell you we can't depend on the first ultrasound only because there is could be an error but if the ultrasound you look if the ultrasound the trans abdominal you will do minimum 14 days what about if the patient um, gestational sac diameter given uh, so we don't have fetal pool so they measure the gestational sac if less than 25 per, uh, millimeter and no visible uh, fetal pool by the ultrasound. And you need again to repeat minimal in seven days because already the ultrasound done trans vaginal. But in trans abdominal, again, you will do at minimal 14 days. Again, if the sac 25 or more and no visible uh, visible uh, fetal pool, just again, don't depend only for one ultrasound. And, uh, again, you need to take another second opinion for viability or and or and uh, you can do ultrasound again seven days because already you you did the ultrasound transfer source of the information also this is um, from nice guideline previous one and the ultrasound diagnosis of the early pregnancy complication talk articles this one from uh, nice guideline this is uh, 2019 nice guideline Okay, any, anyone want to chair? Others? Thank you, Dr. Salma. Anyone want to, to chair or we will okay. take again? Anyone want to chair? Yes, ma'am. I want to volunteer. I want to volunteer, ma'am. What is your name? What is your name? Hello. Dr. An Ankita. Uh, what? Ankita. Ankita. Okay, Dr. Ankita. Continue. Ankita. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. The most the most appropriate next step of action for a lady. The most appropriate next step of action.
section for a lady who presented in EP, uh, EPAU complaining of seven weeks amenorrhea and mild lower abdominal cramps and spotting and the pregnancy test is positive. She is having amenorrhea, cramping and UPT is positive. Diagnose ectopic and arrange laparoscopy, no. Offer medical management of miscarriage, no. Offer methotrexate, no. Major SCG level in serum now and repeat after 48 hours could be an option. Offer ultrasound after a week, no. Ma'am, it should be D. D, correct. Pregnancy of unknown location. If there is D. ultrasound now, we can do. We can. We can choose now. But there is no any ultrasound just after one week, two weeks. So it will be choose the serum HCG now and repeat D. after 48 hours. This is ectopic yes, pregnancy or deadline. Correct answer. Pregnancy of unknown location. Usually the HCG will be less than 1,500. You need to do serum HCG two times, 40, 48 hours apart. If it is increasing more than 63%, so most probably this pregnancy will be intrauterine, and we need to give the patient appointment again between uh, day 7 and day 14 to do transferrenal ultrasound. I can do early, then this, yes, you can do if the HCG level more than 1,500, if viable fetus, so this patient for antenatal care, if viable fetus can't be seen more than 1,500, so again, uh, need to review uh, by senior uh, gynecologist. How much? More than 63% after 48 hours of so normal pregnancy. Uh, second question. Patient 5 weeks amenorrhea, mild vaginal bleeding, beta HCG is 340, raised to 365. After 48 hours, ultrasound shows nothing. Intra or extra uterine. What should be done? Beta HCG after one week, ultrasound after two weeks, laparoscopy. Refer her for clinical review in the early pregnancy assessment service within 24 hours. It uh, it is pregnancy of unknown location. So ideally, ma'am, it should be A or A. B. A, ma'am. A. A. There is, no, okay. there is no choice in the exam, only one choice, okay? <laughs> you, can, you can't use only use only one, A. Okay, so how much yes, increase? I'll be choosing one, A. So it's increasing about 20. It's stranger. So uh, it should be referred uh, for clinical, so it's wrong answer, sorry. So it will be referred for clinical review in early pregnancy assessment surface within 24 hours. Why? Because if HCG decreasing more than 50% after 48 hours, so most probably this pregnancy will not continue. Uh, okay, I will, so I will check. It is decre decreasing more than 50%. So I will tell the patient to do pregnancy test after 14 days, urine, pregnancy test. And if it is negative, no further action. If it is positive, she will return again to assessment if, uh, in 24 hours. If the decrease, Less than 50%, so we, we, we the decrease not more than 50, it's less than 50, or there is increase but not but less than 63. So it, in, it's in between. In between, you remember, we tell if it is increasing more than 63%, this is, will be normal pregnancy. If it is decrease more than 50%, mm -hmm. so this is failed pregnancy, it will not continue. In between, in between. So this patient in between, like in the previous one, it's increasing, but it is not increasing more than 63%. So this patient need for clinical review and early pregnancy assessment surface within 40, uh, uh, 24 hours. This is nice guideline. Okay, ma'am. And now EMQ. Uh, 26, uh, 20, question number 26, early pregnancy loss. Follow medical termination of pregnancy, call by telephone. Complaining of cramps and some bleeding, otherwise no complaint. She has early early pregnancy loss followed by medical termination of pregnancy. Uh, reassure and prescribe analgesic surgical evaluation, ultrasound, do pregnancy test one week later, do pregnancy test three weeks later, do pregnancy test two weeks later. Ma'am, mm, I, I will just reassure her and prescribe analgesics because it is a medical termination. Okay, so A. Okay, next. A. Next. A 14 days post medical. Yes, ma'am. A 14 days. Uh, just, uh, just a minute, ma'am. 
14 days post medical termination of pregnancy call the midwife that her pregnancy test is positive 14 days post medical termination upt is positive then ma'am i guess surgical evacuation should a uh, surgical evacuation should be considered uh why you, why you decide surgical he give you any case that this patient she has remnant yes ma'am because she is, she still has upt positive uh, okay so until when it should be positive okay ma'am it should be at least 3 weeks later so it should be d it should be d d okay um okay d so you choose the whole check your answer correct or no okay your answer correct so in the first one still the patient in the start of uh, just after uh, miscarriage so she can have also bleeding and the cramp just we can assure her and prescribe analgesia even she call by telephone she can buy over the counter no problem but if the patient 14 days and she call she did pregnancy test it's positive so it's normal it should be negative three weeks yes, after three weeks so just three we weeks. need to repeat again after one week not three <coughs> weeks simple. in the exam you remember the information it should be after three weeks then you will run and you will choose three weeks but already the patient already bus 14 days so two weeks removed so you will choose only one week be careful you should be alert in the exam you don't you can know the information all of you know the information but in the exam you check when the patient like like antiphospholipid <coughs> anti antibodies um should be repeated after 12 weeks okay the patient today today already she passed 12 weeks so i will repeat today so, so a patient already passed she did the uh, the test since 12 weeks and she come today you will not, you know the information that I need to repeat again after 12 weeks, but already she passed 12 weeks, you will do today. You get the, the, the idea. Be careful when the test is done, okay? Be careful, be alert in the exam. Okay. So it should be negative after three weeks, but already passed, to, because if I know the information, I will do pregnancy test after three weeks because it should be negative, but already the patient passed two weeks, so I will use Body. still only one week. So she will do pregnancy test after one week, if it is negative, no action. If it is positive, she will return back. So all women uh, with medical treatment, you see here, positive pregnancy test after three weeks, she should return for evaluation. So this may this means that it should be negative after three weeks. So if it is positive, she needs to come to assessment. So if the patient within this period, within three weeks, she did pregnancy test, during pregnancy test, and it is uh, positive, I will reassure her that this is normal. But after three weeks, this patient, she should come again for assessment. And if she is complaining anything, anything like pain, just reassure her and giving her analgesic. And the exam, very stressful time. Okay, management of gestational um, uh, trophoblastic disease, easy. So this is, will be uh, including uh, commonly the, the complete molar pregnancy and partial molar pregnancy, how to differentiate? It depends on the genetic and histopathological features. Complete mole, it will be deployed mostly, no evidence of fetal tissue. It is about 80% will be due to single sperm fertilized empty ovum. Um, the partial mole, 90% will be triploid in origin. Uh, there is, will be a diceberg fertilized of the ovum. Uh, in partial mole, um, usually sometimes in the scan, maybe there is no, um, uh, it can be appear in the hospital. So I can diagnose that this is case of complete molar pregnancy. But when I send the tissue to the hospital, there is, will be fetal RBCs. So I can't confirm that this is partial or complete, except after the result of the hospital. Yes, where are you? Dr. Antika? Uh, ploidy status. Yes, ma'am. Ploidy status and immunohistochemistry staining for may help in distinguishing partial for complete moles. That is AP57, ma'am. It is B? positive and partial and negative and complete. B A A Excellent. Excellent. It will be positive and partial mole and the negative incomplete. Correct. Next. GTD, uh, GTD is a rare event in UK uh, with the calculate incidence is 1 in 714, ma'am. It should be A. 
A. Correct. The incidence of um, trophoblastic disease, one every 714. The patient, she can have symptoms like irregular vaginal bleeding, hyperemesis, uterine enlargement, it will be uh, more than the normal um, corresponding gestational age, early pregnancy uh, failed, uh, what is also, you should suspect, highly suspect if the patient, she has like the symptoms. Okay, next. Easy questions. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Follow up after G you know, follow up after GTD is increasing individualized. If SCG has reverted to normal within 56 days of pregnancy event, then follow up will be six months from the date of uterine evacuation. It should be A. Six weeks from date of six. uterine evacuation. So if the HCG returned to normal. Yes, ma'am. If, if it is returned, yes. yes. I'm sleeping. If it is A. <laughs> sleeping monitor. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I didn't sleep at night. Okay, so if the HCG uh, return within normal, within 56 days, then you should again uh, follow up this patient six months from uh, you trying evacuation. Evacuation. You try evacuation. Yes, ma'am. Correct. Uh, so if the HCG become normal within 56 days, this patient will need follow up for six months from date of evacuation. So if the HCG not return back normal within 56 days, so I six will wait months. until the HCG normalized and I will follow her six months from the date the HCG normalized. In the exam, you will be confused. I will choose which. So look, if the HCG become normal within 56 days, so this patient will need follow up six months from the day of uterine evacuation. If not, so I will see when the HCG normalized and that this patient will need follow up six months from normalized of the HCG level. Patient post evacuation and curatage for missed abortion 10 days previously, histopathology, no molar tissue. Patient has a molar pregnancy in the previous pregnancy and she has follow up six months without need to treatment. Now, plan will be. Patient post evacuation and curatage for missed abortion 10 days previously, histopathology, no molar tissue. Patient has a molar pregnancy in the previous pregnancy and she has to follow up six months without need for treatment. Now, the plan will be. SCG level are measured at six to eight weeks. SCG after six, after six months, no need to follow up as histopathology is normal. HCG after four to six weeks. Uh, Ma'am, it should be either A or D. I will go with A. 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 If the patient she has any history yes, of previous molar pregnancy in the previous pregnancy, so this patient there is risk of recurrence. How much recurrence? How, how much recurrence? Uh, recurrence of molar pregnancy. I forget, ma'am. I don't remember the number. No, you should, for, you should remember. <laughs> I can forget. One that. <laughs> Okay. One, in every, one every 80. One every 80. So this patient should be informed. Next pregnancy, early pregnancy, she should come for follow up because there is risk of recurrence. One every 80. And after any pregnancy, even HCG level should be taken at least after six to eight weeks. So the answer correct A. Okay. Exclude the recurrence. Don't forget the recurrence. One every 80. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I remember. The possibility of need for chemotherapy following a complete more than a partial mole is, ma'am, it should be A, 15 and 0.5. A and B are same. A. A, so 15 for complete and the half. And 0.5 for partial. Yes, so it's one every 200 for partial mole. So it's correct. This is um, a chemotherapy treatment could be needed for the partial and complete and partial. Um, the patient, uh, you are giving a score for the patient. If the score is six or less, she will need only single agent mesotrexate. If it is seven or more, she will need multiple uh, agent, multi-agent chemotherapy. In the single agent, you are giving mesotrexate uh, alternating days daily with folinic acid for one week, followed by six weeks uh, rest day. Seven, uh, how I will remember in the exam, so six and seven, make it six and seven. So six or less. One yes. chemotherapy seven or more, trust it to be easy. It will be multi-agent uh, chemotherapy, otobuzite, mesotrexate, ductamycin, cyclophosphamide, vancristine. Sometimes they are giving imaco. They are telling this is imaco uh, multi-agent chemotherapy. The treatment until when until the HCG normal. So suppose this patient you are giving her chemotherapy for um, uh, gestational trophoblastic um, uh, neoplasia. 
This patient today, she, it's normal HCG, so she will need again follow up consecutive six weeks. So after normalization of the HCG, again, she needs to repeat HCG again for six weeks to consecutive weeks. We'll not stop. So just remember, if this patient take chemotherapy and today's HCG normal, you will not stop the, the, the follow-up. This patient, she will need again treatment to continue the treatment again for further six weeks consecutive. The cure rate, if the HCG, if the, uh, the, the score six or less, is 100, if the score seven or more, the cure rate will be 95%. Uh, chemotherapy can cause early menopause, maybe one year. Uh, there is, uh, if, the, if you are using the multi-agent therapy, uh, include autobuzide, this is will increase the risk of developing secondary cancers. How many pregnancy diagnosed? The diagnosed by uh, first ultrasound can help, but the final diagnosis will be by histopathology. Treatment will be suction if a cartilage this is a method of a choice of treatment. Um, except if the size of the fetus, maybe this is partial, and you can, this will deter the suction cartilage, so medical treatment can be used. Um, during pregnancy test, after any failed pregnancy should be done after three weeks, also to exclude uh, the cases of gestational trophoblastic disease. Uh, Anti-D required after evacuation, be careful. Uh, partial mole, there is fetal part, so you will give anti-D. Complete mole, there is no fetal part, so you will can't get, you, you, no need for anti-D. But until you confirm the diagnosis, it can take up to 10 days the histopathology. So maybe you are thinking that this is a case of uh, complete molar pregnancy, but when the histopathology result come back, it's a case of partial mole. So maybe the time you should give the anti-D already. So all cases of molar pregnancy you will give because I can't confirm this is partial because I should give to partial, but I should not give to complete molar pregnancy, but I can't confirm until the histopathology result come back. And this is, can take 10 days, and maybe the time will be uh, uh, ready for the anti-D bust, so I can't give anti-D. So complete molar pregnancy, we are not giving. If he give you clearly that the histopathology already clearly complete molar pregnancy, so no need to give the sufficient anti-D. If it's still waiting for the histopathology, we can't wait for the anti-D. So we are giving all the patients, uh, depend on the ultrasound, the complete or partial mole, all they will uh, take anti-D. Preparation uh, uh, of the cervix be, uh, immediately, immediately prior to the evacuation, it's safe, but prolonged cervical preparation should be avoidable because this is to decrease the risk of uh, embolization of trophoblastic cells. Um, uh, if the patient with molar pregnancy, she can come uh, in emergency with severe bleeding, so it's better to be uh, evacuated under senior surgeon. Uh, use of oxytocin prior to complete of as if the evacuation, it's also not recommended because this is will lead also to embolization of the trophoblastic cells. So if there is hemorrhage, uh, try to uh, expectate the uh, evacuation faster. And after this, you can uh, uh, give give synthesinone if this is if the patient she has severe breathing and this is good affecting her life. So you can use this time uh, synthesinone. Next. Uh, yes, ma'am. Trophoblastic tumor screening and treatment centers in, it should be C, London, Sheffield, and Dundee. We can we can we can make it Liverpool for more for Muhammad Salah. <laughs> can't be, can't be B. Okay, correct answer. Okay, so it will C. be London, Sheffield, and Dundee. Correct. So this is, will be the centers for follow up. Uh, for gestational trophoblastic disease. Um, so any patient with uh, medical and surgical management after failed treatment, so the histopathology assessment, especially something miscarriage occurs spontaneous, missed the miscarriage. So we need to know maybe there is a, a molar pregnancy. But suppose this patient, we are doing for her abortion, like we are beside this patient, uh, symbiotic. <laughs> Uh, Therapeutic termination, you like Muhammad Salah? <laughs> okay. So this is no need um, if the patient you uh, requesting abortion. Abortion. Okay. 
Uh, and you already see the ultrasound and there is fetal bone and the fetal, uh, fetal, uh, fetal is there. So no need to do histopathology. No need to do histopathology for this patient. But if the patient failed the pregnancy for any other reason, histopathology. So for abortion, for abortion or, or cervical termination, no need to send histopathology to confirm maybe this is because already the baby healthy. But you are doing for any other reason, abortion, patient request for any clause or cervical ter termination, so no need for do histopathology. But for other fail the pregnancy, you will do uh, histopathology. Okay. Next. Hi, yes, ma'am. According to the FIGO scoring system for gestational disease, which metastasis to organ will be zero? It's lung. C. Oh, correct. So the score of lung, it will be zero. From the ascending lung, so I will give no. It will be zero. So if you look here for lung metastasis, it's only zero. For the liver and the brain, it will be four. You see, if the patient the age less than 40, it will be zero. If the age less than 40, it will be only 40. zero. Yes. So it will be also zero. Uh, uh, look for the zero, so it will be easy for you. The number of the, I think, is the large tumor size less than three centimeter, it will be zero. So don't think that if you see long something, it will be, oh, this is, this is, no. In the end, it will be score zero. Um, sometimes in the exam, he can give you a histopathology and ask you for diagnosis. So if he give you that in the placenta, there is multiple, uh, both, they give you both features. He give you multiple cystic space in the placenta, and the ratio between the transverse and anterior posterior dimension greater than 1.5. So it can be 1.6, it can 1.7, it can be 2, it can be 2 point or 2. So if he give you the ratio between the transverse to an uh, anterior posterior dimension, more than 1.5 or there is cystic space, so this will be partial more. So if he give you the, the ultrasound feature, what is this? So it will be partial more. Um, HCG will be higher. It will be greater than two multiple of the median. Greater than two multiple of the median. The HCG will be higher. And this is explain why the patient will have excessive vomiting. Um, I think this is repeated. I think I was sleeping yesterday <laughs> because I'm arranging the slide, but I still I leave one, so I mean still I'm not concentrated well. Okay. Yes, uh, the classically described snowstorm appearance is more common. It is more common in complete molar pregnancy. So snowstorm, snowstorm grabs like grabs, so it will be complete molar pregnancy. Hey. So ultrasound feature we can tell that this is complete but remember we are depending in the end in the histopathology okay uh, yes ma'am question number 36 it is recommended that women treated with methotrexate wait before trying to conceive again at least three months it should be a i will suicide <laughs> i will suicide what is this woman treated with Mr. we are talking okay. about molar pregnancy Okay, sorry, okay, I will add. I, no, no, no. I, I am at. We are talking here about methotrexate. So please, I will add here um, for molar pregnancy because we are talking about molar pregnancy now. We are talking about molar. I, I there is defect in the question. I should add also uh, molar uh, molar pregnancy. We are treating is not 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 not, not ectopic. Sorry, this is also there is <laughs> there is some information missed here. Yes, ma'am, they have not mentioned whether it is uh, like how yes, much duration yes, has elapsed with complete or partial. That's am, why it's three months. I am, no, no, I am the one missed. If, if chemotherapy uh, used for molar pregnancy already, there is a decision to take chemotherapy for the molar pregnancy. So I will add here molar pregnancy. Do not be confused. So then okay? it should be one year. One year. Okay, sorry. This After is, uh, molar pregnancy. Year. Yes, after molar pregnancy, one year from completion of the treatment, but in the ectopic pregnancy, it will be three months. Okay, three so months. for this month. Um, usually in the gestational trophoblastic disease, we are using barrier. We are depending, please. I know that there is talk articles, different information than the green top, but if we have information in the green top guideline, we depend the first source green top guideline. So barrier method until the HCG return to normal, H also combined oral contraceptive pills should be used when the HCG normalized, but if the patient to start 
just we will tell her regarding increase the risk of gestational trophoblastic neoplasia and may need uh, uh, increase the risk of chemotherapy. No intrauterine also uh, device because until the HCG normalized because this is, can increase the risk of uterine perforation. So, so ma'am, regarding the previous question, uh, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Regarding the previous question, it was not mentioned. It was partial or complete. It was mentioned just methotrexate. So ideally, the answer should be three months, na? Just methotrexate. No. no uh, we are talking about. We are talking about contraception. We are talking yes. about how much she will wait until conceive against uh, again. So either partial moon. Either partial no, mole or some... She might uh, have received methotrexate for any other reason because they are not mentioned whether it is partial or complete. Okay, they didn't mention partial or complete. We tell half percent of the patient with partial mole, they will need chemotherapy. And we mentioned 15% if complete, if, if complete molar pregnancy, correct? So once the patient, she will need chemotherapy for for molar pregnancy, either complete or partial, she will need to take contraception at least one year. Clear? Not all the patient partial moles will take chemotherapy, only half percent, so it's about one every 200. Once she needs chemotherapy, she needs to take contraception, she not, not conceive at all at least one year. Make it easy for yourself. Ectopic pregnancy, chemotherapy, she take chemotherapy, she will um, uh, uh, use contraception for what, three months. Molar pregnancy, whatever the, the type, she will use at least one year. One year, okay? Make it easy for yourself. Um, what is also, I think we finished this one. This is the source of the information management of gestational trophoblastic Green top guideline, February 2020, uh, 10. Okay, we need one. Anyone more want to share? I forget that I am preparing hyper MCs. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Can you hear Who's... me? I'm Dr. Sumaya. Yes, Dr. Sumaya. We can start. Still awake or sleeping? No, no, I'm awake. Awake, really? Why are you sleeping? <laughs> State of findings defined in uh, hyperemesis gravidurum. It's uh, electrolyte imbalance, weight loss, and uh, dehydration. Uh, this is B. I will go for B. Three things. B. Electrolyte imbalance, weight loss, uh, 5%, and dehydration. Okay, so dehydration, don't forget dehydration, weight loss at least 5% of the pre-pregnancy from the pregnancy weight, and electrolyte imbalance. So it will be B, correct answer. Incidence of, sorry. Incidence of nausea and vomiting in pregnancy effect up to, uh, 70, it's 80%. 80% of pregnancy. 80%. 80%. Yeah. 80% of the patients, you will have nausea and vomiting in pregnancy. Correct. Correct answer. Incidence of a hyperemesis gravidinum effect up to um, 3.6. 3. 3.6 hyperemesis gravidarum, correct answer. So this is the difference in incidence of nausea and vomiting and hyperemesis. Nausea and vomiting, this is uh, when onset, uh, the vomiting will happen in the first trimester. When other causes of nausea and vomiting excluded, be careful. I can't tell every patient vomiting in the pregnancy that this is a case of nausea and vomiting with pregnancy, no. Maybe she is a case of gastroenteritis. Maybe uh, gastric ulcer, maybe uh, bilinephritis, uh, maybe any other reason. So you need to exclude other causes of vomiting before I tell that this is case. This is very important point. Nausea and vomiting. This is a diagnosis of exclusion. Exclude other reasons of vomiting. Hyperemesis. Uh, if the patient she um, uh, complaining frequent vomiting and loss uh, more than five percent of the pre-pregnancy weight loss. 
and dehydration, dehydration and electrolyte imbalance. Don't be confused. The question can appear in the exam, then you will be confused because you will tell, I should choose ketonuria or no, so dehydration, weight loss more than 5% and electrolyte uh, imbalance. Patient nausea and vomiting is uh, the incidence up to 80%, but hyperemesis gravidarum, it's only 03 to 3.6% of pregnant women. Um, typically stay the nausea and vomiting between three and four days. I think this question we answered the last um, uh, session, but we can repeat, no problem. We can, uh, we did it as an example of EMQ. Patient with uh, refractory vomiting tried community medicine but failed. So it's A, ambulatory daycare. Um, okay, so number 40A. Okay, next. Patient continue nausea and vomiting associated with ketonuria. Weight loss greater than 5% body weight in spite of NTM treatment. So, hello? Yes, yes, what? You answer? I, I, I didn't hear. You answer? Yeah, I answer A, then it is 41, 41. We finished 40, 41. 41. Yeah. What is your answer? I think we this one will be, I will remove. But, but the answer will appear. <laughs> I will not remove now. <laughs> yeah. So, 41? Yeah, it is F. 41F. 41F in patient management should be considered IV fluids, anti-emetic, vitamin, low molecular weight, heparin. Okay. F, so 42? 42 in patient, um, patient with hyperemesis urinary tract infection. So it is antibiotic needed. So what, what is your C. answer? C? C? No, no. In patient management with IV fluid, IV antibiotic, anti-amnetics, and uh, it's E, E. E, e okay. E. I, will, I will correct now, sorry. I will correct now. So you answer 40A, correct? You answer 41F, uh, correct? 42P. Why Why I answer B? I answer B, why? B One minute. And, uh, F was, uh, E was same. B and E was uh, no, same. It should be, no, it should be E, sorry. It should be IV antibiotic, not so, sorry. So I will change this one to E. E, sorry, one minute. Just I will correct this one. I think because I bought, um, I think because I bought B besides the answer. Okay, so be careful regarding the low molecular weight heparin. If it is not there, okay. If it is there in the exam, you should uh, choose the patient because hyperemesis once the patient admitted to the hospital. If they try community treatment, so they wanted to touch the point of ambulatory care. If the patient, she is in patient, so you are going to give her IV fluids, antiemetic vitamins, and also once she admitted to the hospital, she will take low molecular weight heparin. In patient management, if there is antibiotic, we will not give her oral antibiotic, we will give her IV because the patient already uh, vomit. B, uh, BUQ uh, uh, score, this is patient quantification, unique quantification uh, of emesis. She are giving the patient some questions she will answer regarding the nausea, regarding vomiting, regarding reaching, and they giving her, she will uh, uh, choose um, a score. And after this, this will be done 24 hours. 
if the, the score six or less, it will be mild. Seven to 12, moderate. 13 to 15 will be severe. So until moderate, mild, and moderate, you can give the patient antiemetic, no problem in the community. Just you will give her prescription and lifestyle modification and dietary change until her uh, do at home. So mild and moderate, uh, you can do in the uh, community. If the patient is severe, so you can start here for ambulatory care. She will come, she will take IV fluids, uh, saline, potassium, uh, giving her anti-emetic, cyamine, and we'll see if there is any, and daily also monitor for the electrolytes, and if there is no improvement, she will be admitted to the hospital. In patient management, you see the thromboprophylaxis will be a very important safety for the patient because once the patient admitted to the hospital, she should receive also a low molecular weight heparin with the other management of anti-emetic. Uh, dextrose infusion, it's better to be avoided unless the sodium uh, level normal and thiamine should be administrated also. Next. Peak of hyperemetic cavidarum is nine weeks. B. Nine weeks. Peak of hyperemesis gravidarum at nine weeks. Correct answer. Uh, this is, again, I am stressing that hyperemesis, nausea, and vomiting, this is diagnosed of exclusion. So we need to exclude other causes of nausea and vomiting. Ultrasound scan is important to confirm the viability of the patient, uh, baby, uh, how many babies, multiple pregnancy or no, or this is a case of molar pregnancy or no. So the ultrasound to exclude two points, molar pregnancy and multiple, uh, molar pregnancy and multiple pregnancy. Uh, important to, to um, this patient, she need MDT, will include uh, midwives, nurses, dietitian, endocrinologist, nutritionist, gastroenterologist, according to her. Sometimes the patient, she can have also mental uh, health problem, like depression. This is also can cause vomiting for her. Sometimes with the treatment, if the case persistent, this is could uh, harm the patient and the termination of the pregnancy could be a treatment option uh, for the patient. Hyperemesis gravidarum, uh, the score in the thrombosis um, uh, guideline, uh, thromboprophylaxis, it will be score three. But the patient, she will take only during admission. Uh, this is the treatment modality, uh, therapy for the hyperemesis, the first line, cyclazine. Don't forget the first line, cyclazine. Others, bro, bro, chloro. Bro, bro, chloro. Uh, bromicazine, if you, if you are familiar with the doses, you can uh, do. Uh, second line treatment will be metoclobramide. This is second line because of the side effect like uh, extra pyramidal manifestation. So the maximum time for the uh, brain brain, metoclobramide, it will be five days. Others, you can use uh, endosterone. This is called Zofran. Uh, Domberidone also can be used. Third line treatment, it will be corticosteroid. They are giving the corticosteroid 100 milligram IV twice daily until clinical improvement. After this, they can convert to 40 to 50 milligram per oral. Uh, then gradually, they are decreasing the, the dose until control the symptoms of the patient. Next. Hello? When women with severe hyperemesis, gravidarum are considered, it has been shown, those requiring repeated admission have incidence of small for gestational babies. How much? A. A. Mm -hmm. uh, if the patient she complaining a frequent times uh, admission, she repeated admission, there is risk this patient she could have also risk of uh, small for gestational age about 18%. So this patient, if she continue to have vomiting frequent time, frequent admission, this patient should offer serial ultrasound monitor for the baby gross. Line I answer three. this question. I answer this question. <laughs> 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 I wish I wish the answer in the exam also. 
Yeah. So what? Eggs, I can drink. Cyclazine. Yeah. is the first line treatment. Be careful because sometimes in the real practice you are not using cyclazine. So be careful. You should be uh, strict to the guideline uh, rules. Okay, next. Patient pregnant, six weeks complaining, uh, nausea and vomiting. She don't like anti -anxious. So uh, it is ginger. A ginger, ginger. Ginger, ginger. So if the patient she wants to avoid anti-emetic therapy and she just wants something herbal, so it can use in mild and moderate nausea and vomiting. Ginger. Also for weight loss. <laughs> weight loss, it's good. <laughs> okay. Patient with hyperemesis diabetes, she came in ER with seizures. So it is uh, uh, Hyponatremia. The cause is hyponatremia. Excellent. Excellent. Hyperemesis with scissor. So this is a case of hyponatremia. Correct. Uh, what is vernix encephalopathy? Because some they are thinking vernix encephalopathy uh, will cause uh, uh, convulsions or fat. No. This is due to vitamin B1 deficiency. Vitamin B1 deficiency. This is thiamine. And this is potentially fatal condition, but it is reversible. And the overall pregnancy loss rate, it reached to 48%. So this patient will lose her baby in about 50% of the cases. Uh, so uh, we are, this is, we are telling you before, we avoid um, dextrose, especially if the sodium of the patient is not normal. And if you are giving, should be the sodium normal and also should be a patient to receive uh, vitamin B1. A uh, patient, she can have blurred vision, confusion, memory problems, um, drowsiness, and also she can have hyporeflexia, areflexia, and the finger to nose ataxia. There is no fit, so be careful because some of you are thinking of vernix in obviously causing fit, and this is not a correct answer. So, hyponatremia was the answer of the previous question. Next. Patient had folic acid and vitamin D2 deficiency. Folic acid has been started by doctor and they had a plan to start vitamin D12. She came with uh, seizures for vitamin D12. It is B. For vitamin, vitamin B12. B. Yeah. Yes, vitamin B12 deficiency come with fat or scissors. This is, will be subacute degeneration, combined degeneration. As this is happened with vitamin B12 deficiency, she will have multiple um, uh, symptoms, peripheral neuropathy, subacute combined degeneration of the cord. So this is one uh, of uh, can be caused with uh, vitamin B12 deficiency. So, so subacute degeneration of spinal cord due to vitamin B12 deficiency, correct? Twenty-four year old primary terminal presence at eight weeks gestation to the emergency department with uncontrolled vomiting, urine analysis, reduced ketones, she plus. What is the plan of management? Um, ultrasound and the music B1 replacement the rehydration B normal saline. Normal saline. D. What? D? No, no. Okay. D. 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 What? Yeah. D. The last, the last answer. D. 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 The last yeah. answer. D. In the exam, D. in the exam, if you choose answer, just to check the answer, the other answers. If there is more correct answer. More correct answer. So here it's ultrasound, it's better. Maybe this is a case of molar pregnancy, maybe this is a case of multiple pregnancy. So here the answer will be uh, D, correct. So ultrasound to confirm, not multiple pregnancy, not molar pregnancy, antiemetic, vitamin B1 supplementation, rehydration with normal saline. I think there is three questions more. Three questions patient, more. Patient. Don't worry about to finish. Hello. Yes. 
What is the answer? Uh, I didn't read the question. Yes, read. Um, a 30 year old pregnancy attends uh, early pregnancy assessment within eight weeks. Complains nausea, vomiting, and stating that she has been feeling unwell for several days, unable to keep uh, anything down, which is the likely ABG. Um, so it will be SCT. Uh, what will cause the vomit is the nausea and the vomiting. What will cause? It's, uh, uh, I will go for. Uh, what will cause? Uh, nausea and the vomiting will cause acidosis, alkalosis. It, uh, uh, of alkalosis. Metabolic alkalosis. So yeah. how much should be the BH? Oh. In metabolic alkalosis, how much? pH will be high. How much? High? How much? <laughs> it's uh, uh, more than uh, I, I guess uh, more than uh, seven point four. More than seven point four. More than so more than seven point so, four five. More than yeah. seven point four five. So here we can exclude how many answer? This answer, uh, one, two, C, three. D, so, we have, yeah. so we have to answer more. So how much should be the um, HCO2? HCO2 uh, is uh, around 18 to 20, 22, 18 to 20. So your answer what? Uh, B. I think I will go for B. Let's see the answer. <laughs> it's it. This conference will now be recorded. Hello. Yes. So, so now the the BH should be more than. So the answer will be A. The BH should be more than seven. Uh, please close the the camera. Please close the camera. Everyone, please close your camera. Okay. The seven point uh, uh, more than seven point um, uh, seven point four five. And the HCOC3, uh, it will be more than 26. So this is, will be applied for number number A. Uh, the normal BO2, it will be 8290. So how I will remember the BH more than 7.45, and the uh, HCO3, it will be more than 26. I don't know what happened for the laptop. It's so hanging now. One minute. So it will be the one more than 26. Here it will be the one uh, here 35. Okay. Um, nausea and vomiting because hyponatremia, hypokalemia, low serum urea, raised hematocrit, and will cause metabolic hypochloremic uh, alkalosis. But in severe cases, it could lead to acidemia. Mallory uh, uh, with syndrome, this is condition tear occur in the mucosa of the membrane in the esophagus where the esophagus meets the stomach. This is will lead to vomiting with tinged blood. This is will heal within seven to 10 days. Okay, next, I think I answer this. I don't know, I give all the answer. <laughs> I give the answer before the question, very bad. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Which one? B1. 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 Okay. 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 Okay.
بي 9 فوليك اسيد از فيتامين بي 9 يو سي فيري سيمبل كويشن بس ات كود بي ديفيكالت فوليك اسيد از فيتامين بي 9 لاست كويشن ذس از نوت شود بي نوت شود نوت بي ان ذا هايبر ايميس اي دونت نو اي شود درينك مات مات وات ويتش وان Which one? Which one? C. C. C is the normal curve. Last answer. I think it's A. If you uh, look again, it will increase to 10, and after this, it will be decreasing. I think it's A. It's A. I will confirm it again, but I think it's A. Bell shape. It will be bell shape. But I will confirm again. I will post, but it's bell shape. So it's uh, to remember oh, easily. Yeah. There is no any bell shape here. The only bell shape this one. So it will be this one. Okay. So it's A. Okay. Yeah. Um, this was the last question. Thank you for all of you uh, who uh, shared today in the meeting. I wish it, um, uh, it it will help you in the exam. Just uh, you need to uh, listen to the record in the recall uh, recall groups. There is a topics regarding molar pregnancy and ectopic pregnancy and nausea and vomiting. Every record about 15 minutes. Just you can uh, just listen to it and uh, listen again to the session today. It's important to, to solve much questions as you can. Because part two exam depend mainly on solving questions, especially some contact me. They tell we can't uh, pass the exam. It's easy if you uh, uh, go through the questions and you can revise the information. Uh, there is benefit from the record, the recall uh, groups. That there is um, uh, excellent record there for green top guidelines. So you need to you need to um, uh, practice questions, much questions, and also update your information. It's important to update your information also, because if there is one new guideline and you just answer from the old guidelines, so it will be also difficult to pass the exam. If you are studying from any box, just be confirmed regarding the update. Sometimes maybe the answer in the question, the, the book, it's correct according to the old guideline. So be careful, study hard, and we, I will arrange more um, more sessions, more questions, so you can practice more more with me. And thank you a lot for all of you. Your all of you, your level is really uh, excellent. Just you need to practice more and more. Uh, thank you for all of you. Anyone wanted to ask any question? Contraception. Okay, we will talk about contraception. Interbartum aim. No problem. We can. We, I will arrange this, but I will not. Uh, I will try to arrange, um, um, uh, um, I, I make it concise why I, I don't like to make um, sessions long sessions. For me, as a, uh, when I attend any courses, my concentration usually decreases with the time. So if it is concise, your concentration will be high. You will uh, know every information. But if it is long time, for me, I will also, um, I will, my, my concentration will decrease, your <laughs> concentration will decrease. It's better to be concise. Okay? Uh, ma'am, sorry to interrupt, ma'am. Please, can you explain the question number 10 again? Question number 10? Yeah, number that 10. was that ectopic pregnancy suspicious and confirmed there. Ma'am, actually, I missed it and I was having doubt in that. That's why. Ah, okay, this is nice guideline. Question number yeah. 10. This is nice guideline. If you read the guideline, uh, if you read the guideline, it will be easy question. If you uh, don't no. read the guideline, it will be difficult. This one? This one? Right? Yes, ma'am. Question number 10, ma'am. I want to see that question, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. High probability. High probability. So uh, still, I, I am confirmed or not confirmed. I, I, I am not confirmed, correct? So any song is there is yolk sac or fetal heartbeat, this is confirmed, correct? I will, okay, I will confirm. Choose one. In easy way, in easy way, there is yolk sac, there is fetal heart or fetal bone, this will be tubal pregnancy. If you're not there, so this will be high probability. So the only one not containing yolk sac and the fetal bone in an easy way, so it will be the high probability. Easy? 
Okay, ma'am, because I thought that if FCA is there, that it means it's a dual pregnancy, so it's confirmed. That's why I was uh, thinking of B. No, okay, high probability. To be careful regarding high probability of tubal pregnancy or this is tubal pregnancy. This is very important because this is in last guideline, 2019. Any okay, more questions? Ma Any more questions? Ma'am, can you go to question number 11, please? I want to take 11. Okay, Levin, so this patient, we need to see if this patient indicate tubal pregnancy. So okay, ma'am. Okay, okay, I got done. Thank you, ma'am. I got it. Um, you have here yolk sac. So any, anything, I have yolk sac or fetal bone, fetal bone, so this will be tubal pregnancy. Easy, okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. there, this is this high probability. Okay. Yeah, you, because, Dr. Rada, in this question, if we follow the uh, green and top guideline, they said the most uh, or the majority of tubal pregnancy, they will come with inhomogeneous or non-cystic uh, adenixial mass. So the adenixial mass will be the, in the most of the tubal pregnancy. So we got confused. We need to follow the nice as well. Um, as a, as a question, when will come? It will come yeah. clearly. If you okay. wanted to ask a question regarding the ultrasound features, so this means that this information is from the green top guideline. But if you wanted to ask about high suspicious, high mm -hmm. probability, and this is a tubal pregnancy, so this means that he wanted the information of the nice guideline. It's easy. Don't okay. confuse yourself. Make it simple. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Adam. Any uh, welcome all Hello. of you? Any more questions? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Hello. Yes. Uh, Dr. Gadai, this was very excellent class. I just wanted to know this expectant management for ectopic pregnancy. Uh, it, it is uh, 247, right? The beta what HCG levels, what we measure. What, what is we measure for the beta Be Measurement of the beta HCG when we give expectant management. Yes. It is 247, right? For the uh, new guidelines. In the, in the, in the, in the, which? 2-4? Two, 2-4 four? Two, four or 2-7? Two, 2-4-7. Seven. Seven. Day, day 2, day 4, day 7. Uh, from where is this 4? This is 2019 guideline. Nice. Uh, this is nice guideline. Okay. I put the expectant management of the green top guidelines. They are telling individual assessment. So you can give from 2-7. Two 2-7. To seven. Two to seven, Maybe I can give three days, four days, seven days. You get the idea? So it can be between two uh, to seven days. This is individual assessment. So the information in total, it's it's similar. OK, OK. Thank you. Hello, doctor. Yes. Hello. Uh, yes. Doctor, can you go to the 21 question, please? Once, please. 21, 21 questions? Yeah. 21, which one? That is the EMQ, ma'am. EMQ it is. Uh, twin, how much? Which number of the question? 21, 21, 21. Yeah. 2, 1, 21. 21. That is the EMQ, ma'am, actually. This one? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the 21st one, madam, is that how can we say that directly the evacuation in this case? Can you please explain, ma'am? Which one? I Which 21? Is, yeah, 21. I thought it is the expectant management. Uh, but the answer was given is the elective evacuation. Can you please, uh, how can we decide that? Can you please explain, ma'am? You wanted to, yes. Um, the point of the management, this is this is confirmed missed the miscarriage or not? Yeah. Confirmed, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Confirmed so, the miscarriage. So you can give her uh, evacuation. This patient can offer evacuation for the retained of product of conception or not? Okay. Can can be a uh, um, uh, one of the treatment options or no? I know that you are confused because it can be also conservative management. Yeah, yeah. Expectant management is the first one. Okay. Actually, in the nice guideline, in the nice guideline, if it is confirmed, what is the first line treatment? 
can anyone check we can check this point i understand your concern is that you want why we can give mm. her options she can wait this is options mm. uh, but um, i i yes i am with directly, you in the uh, directly elective evacuation can we go directly to the elective evacuation it will because, be the uh, according to the nice uh, it is given that oh. the first we have to give the expectant management Okay, so I will review this answer again. No problem. I I understand your uh, concerns that you why why we yeah. why we are going to do evacuation. So no problem. Uh, okay, let's yeah, confirm yeah. this. Let's you confirm this one again. Yeah, what? Yeah. Ma'am, excuse me. There's eleven weeks, ma'am. That's why they are doing evacuation. I think. Is it correct, ma'am? For me. For me, if this question came in the exam and he gave me patient already confirm it and he asked me what could be the action, so it can if there is medical uh, sorry if there is evacuation, so this patient should be evacuated because he wanted to confirm this patient missed or not or, or missed miscarriage or not. So this is missed miscarriage. Other options can be also offered. If the patient she tell I don't like to have DNC, I I wanted to wait for sometimes maybe it will be spontaneous uh, miscarriage will happen. So it can be option, but if I if I offer the patient evacuation and the cartage for the retained product of conception, it will be maybe in the exam he will not give you something to making you confused that the two options can be there. I'm sure in the exam he can't give two answers. You get the idea. In the exam it will be sharp. Okay, so we can again we can confirm if there is some uh, treatment first one line treatment, but this patient to confirm it already. Means the abortion to D and C can be an option of treatment, but other options, which one will be first conservative or um, uh, surgery? Let me confirm again from the guideline. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks a mm lot. -hmm. Hello, Any Dr. Gada. Dr. Yes. Gada, for 2021, 20, it may not be expectant because it should be less than five weeks, right? Less than six weeks. So we cannot give expectant management for a nine weeks pregnancy. Then the other option is uh, medical it, management. Medical management. Uh, there is one option H, but it contains mefepristone, so we cannot choose that. Yes, yes we can choose. Yeah. Uh, so, so that is doctor, also. So, so um, what is your name, doctor? So in Dr. the guideline, Doctor Sumanda, this is in the guideline, yeah. and they are giving only conservative for less than six weeks. Yeah, yeah. Conservative okay. management only for the six weeks, and she should be stable. That is the okay. criteria. Okay. So that, we cannot just for. Can, uh, Nine weeks. Please, can you can you screenshot this one and post in yeah, the yeah, reports yeah. group now? So yeah, so now yeah. the, the answer correct. So the answer evacuation of the retained the product. So just the left foot option good. will be only the evacuation according to thank me. You. I'll just thank post the clarification. Just post. Thank you for you. Thank you a lot. Um, it's important to share the informations, uh, especially if there is uh, any doubt about uh, certain answer. Any more questions? So we want to uh, Dr. Gada, uh, thank you very yes. much for a wonderful session. I want to know whether you will post this recording uh, in the group. You will you share it yes, because I, I missed the major I part. Will post, I will post <laughs> in the YouTube, but there is no anyone subscribe, so I, I will not post. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Thank you. Have a great sense of humor. <laughs> I'm not increasing the subscribe. I will not post. <laughs> so, we are uh, looking uh, forward for your sh uh, sharing this recording. Thank you so I will, much. I will, post, I will post, but just it will take 30 minutes. Uh, I think it will take 30 minutes. Then again to upload it in the YouTube, it will take time. So maybe within one hour or two hours, it will be available in the YouTube, inshallah. Yeah, great. That's great. Thank you. We'll be looking forward Thank for your you. next session. No, no, I will prepare another session and also I will uh, post in the. Thank you a lot for all of uh, you. Thank you. Excuse me. Sorry. Last one Thank question. You. Thank you. Uh, ma'am, where will be uploaded, ma'am? Yes, on YouTube, in YouTube channel. Okay. Dr. Agada, I would yes, like to ask about mifibristone, please. What? About the use of uh, mifibristone. At what age and what the, what the dose? It's okay, let this one, let, mm -hmm. let, let discuss this point in the missed miscarriage because there is important okay. question about gestational age more yes. than 26 weeks. So let it in another session. Okay, and the dose because there is a lot yes. of yeah. Yes, because this is uh, yes confusing between yeah. micro on the milligram and this is happened in the exam. Yes. Okay, make yes. it. I will make it in the uh, session of the missed miscarriage. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you a lot for all of you. Okay.
في يو اقول في يو ان شاء الله اي ويل بوست ذا تايم اوف ذا نيتيف سيشن ات ويل بي اي ثينك وي فينيش بي 35 كويشنز اي ثينك اتس اوت I am awake, but I wish you are all of you also awake, not sleeping. This is very important, not only me. Okay, so see you, inshallah, all of you, and um, I will post the date of the next session uh, in the group soon. Okay, thank you for all of you. And thank you. Thank you, ma'am.